Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Ask Mr. Elrod. Funny story, uh, the other day in class actually a couple of students asked me to revive this particular video series. I'd actually forgotten about it. I uh, hadn't looked at any of the questions in a long time and hadn't even really considered doing any of these, but uh, well, mostly because uh, it was a waste of my time because I'd do the video and then wouldn't get very many views on it, but you know, when, when a student does something as flattering as ask you to, uh, to look at something again, then, you know, by golly, you take the time uh, to revisit that idea and, uh, you know, you give it another shot. So here we go. We're going we're gonna to go with another couple of segments of Ask Mr. L. We'll see how it goes, see what kind of response we get, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So, from the top. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another session of Ask Mr. Elrod, a video series where you ask and I answer life's toughest questions. Now, the question that we have for today is fairly intriguing to me because it can really tell a lot, it can help you to tell a lot about an individual, their values, um, the, way that they, the way that they view life, uh, you know, the way that, uh, the, you know, probably how successful they're going to be in life. And the question that we have for today is, Mr. Elrod, what is your favorite TV show? Now, what we have to understand is that uh, when someone asks you what your favorite TV show is, it's really asking more than just what do you like to watch on the television. It's really more about how is it that you're spending your free time. Free time is something that's uh, significant because uh, when we talk about uh, the lives that people are living and we talk about wealth around the world, we have to understand that uh, free time and something that not all people have always had around the world. And so I think it's really interesting to peer into the lives of individuals and ask them, how is it that you spend your free time? And so when we get when we get down to it, when we start talking about favorite television shows, it's not, again, it's not just about the show that you're watching. It's about how is it that you're choosing to spend your free time? And so I will tell you that uh, I do not spend a tremendous amount of time watching television. Certainly I did as a, as a younger person when I was uh, more foolish and a little bit more careless with my free time. Now that I'm an adult and I'm a husband and a father, uh, I try to be a little bit more careful uh, with my free time. Uh, and so as far as the free time that I have, I spend it um, in a couple of ways, obviously spending time with my kids and playing with my kids. Now when my kids go to bed, I, I typically have about two hours uh, where it's just uh, me and my wife or me by myself if my wife is taking care of other things. Uh, and so typically from 8 to 10 o'clock, I go to bed about 10 o'clock, I will have some free time there. Uh, and so I will spend that reading. To, uh, for the first hour, I try to spend that reading. Uh, whether, and most of the time, it's uh, some sort of, um, it, it's a book for enjoyment. Uh, not anything that I have to read, but something that I would like to read. Uh, so currently, I am reading a biography on uh, Alex. No, I am reading a biography on the father of Alexander Dumas, the author of uh, Alexander Dumas is the author of the Count of Monte Cristo, uh, the Three Musketeers, so forth and so on. Uh, so I'm currently reading that. I uh, just got done reading Super Freakonomics uh, not too long ago. Uh, so do things like that. Then for the second hour. I will, uh, I will then take the time to watch, try to find something on, on uh, now not really TV because we don't have, ca well, we have basic cable at our house, not too many uh, television shows, uh, but I'll find something on uh, streaming worthwhile, uh, I'll try to find something that's worthwhile. Um, so currently I am watching a biography on Nat King Cole, and that's something that uh, I've been watching here recently. Uh, just got done with the series of the Defenders. Was not terribly impressed uh, with the Netflix series of of the Defenders, um, and so uh, that is how that is how I will spend my that's how I will spend my free time. Someone's peeking. Someone's peeking my door, trying to uh, trying to invade on my privacy. But anyway, so so that's 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 today. So uh, looking at my favorite TV shows. So like I said, the, the, if you look at someone in the TV shows that I like to watch, it really tells you something about that person. It uh, really gets at the, uh, the character of that person. It can even talk to you about the level of intelligence of that person. Uh, 
So when I was a when I was a student, when I was a teenager, uh, you know, the one show that I really liked uh, was Seinfeld. Seinfeld. If you look at uh, publications today, if you look at uh, reviews today, they talk about Seinfeld being kind of a revol. You know. And I, I guess that I've, I've really picked up on a lot of things that are pretty revolutionary. I came around in time with things were pretty revolutionary. Seinfeld was considered revolutionary for a sitcom. Uh, the humor there was, you know, you had to be, it's, it's pretty dry, witty humor. You had to, you had to, you know, understand things here kind of at a higher level in order to get the, the humor at Seinfeld. Now, when I was growing up in the, in the 90s and early 2000s, um, you know, they said that really there's two types of people. There's friends people and they're Seinfeld people. Uh, you know, be leery of Friends people. Um, Seinfeld and Friends people are not necessarily always going to mix. For, anyway, uh, so Seinfeld was the was the show that uh, was the show that I really liked as a kid. Now, as I got older, uh, and uh, within the last couple years, when we had expanded cable and we could watch some different shows on on the kind of the expanded networks. My favorite show was Bizarre Foods with Andrew Zimmer. Uh, I always said that I tra that, that was the way that I traveled. I traveled vicariously through Andrew Zimmer. Really like the way that he interacts and engages with the people. Uh, I like the way that he really presents not just the food but also the culture and kind of gets at a, a, a much deeper level uh, with the people there. And so you really get a sense of the location that he is at. Not only that, he. You know, I like his personality. There's some other uh, food personalities out there who I feel like are a little crass, and I really like the uh, kind of the cleanliness of the Andrews uh, of Andrew Zimmern show and the way that uh, the way that he presents himself and the way that he engages uh, with the people. So I really appreciate what he does. He really um, encouraged me to maybe be a little bit more adventurous in my own personal food habits, and so um, I try to uh, I try to be a little bit more. Um, I try to get outside of my comfort zone when we go and we go and we were able to go uh, to different restaurants and things like that. So um, he's inspired me to uh, to expand my palate, to expand my palate, and to um, try some some different things. Now I will say that that probably in terms of like my guilty pleasure uh, when it comes to uh, free time, that would have to be college football. I am a Georgia Tech fan, and I, you know a lot of people look at me. Well, Georgia Tech's really not any good. Um, you know that's okay with me. They typically do pretty well every year. It's certainly exciting just about every week. You don't really know whether they're going to win or going to lose, uh, and so they send you on this emotional roller coaster, which is to me, which is what is fun about college football. I will say that uh, it's much more. Uh, it's easier for me to spend my time doing that because it's one game a week. The season's much shorter, so if my team disappoints me, uh, I only spent maybe, you know, uh, a couple of months really worrying about it, and then after that, the season's over. Uh, you know, much different from you know, one year I really kept up with professional baseball, the Braves. Uh, I was a Braves fan since I was a kid, and now uh, the Braves have done a lot of things to aggravate me. Um, and then there was the one season I was watching, really keeping up with them, and you know, there's several games a week, and so it's really trying to follow the team and the players and uh, pay attention. And it's just this really long season; it's all this time, and then they just fell apart at the end of the season. Didn't make the playoffs; they were in first, and then fell. Oh, it's just it's really frustrating. Uh, and so you know, I decided from that point forward, I'm like, you know, I'm just not even going to pay attention anymore. It's too much of my time. If they make the playoffs, I will watch, but beyond that. You know, it's just too much. It's too much of an investment. College football, you know what? From uh, August, September to, to January, like I said, if your team's playing one game a week, uh, if you watch that game, then it's three to four hours out of your week that you're spending on that. So, uh, I really don't feel like it's uh, it's too huge of an investment. I enjoy it. Uh, it's, like I said, with with a team like Georgia Tech, it's kind of an emotional roller coaster, and that's kind of the fun fun of it all and so that's that's what i enjoy so anyway favorite tv shows seinfeld when i was younger uh now if, if you're going to try to get into seinfeld make sure that uh you know it's uh it's not for everyone because the humor mm, a little up here so you gotta make sure you're ready for that and then certainly bizarre foods if you have access to uh if you have access to the travel channel uh if not there's some stuff out there on youtube you can find but i would highly encourage 
uh, if, especially if you're taking the human geography course, check out uh, Bizarre Foods, Andrew Zimmer. Fantastic show, you really get some insight into a lot of different, what are you doing coming into my room? Now go back outside. So anyway, uh, those are my suggestions. I hope you, uh, you know, might check those out. Let me know what you think. Uh, so thanks for watching, as always. I hope to see you next time.